What is gesso? Gesso is generally white. It is a primer that's used before we paint. Gesso is Italian for plaster. And the surface that we get from the gesso is something very similar to plaster. A, a very matte, um, absorbent finish. And that absorbency or, or key or tooth, so sort of roughness, um, where the paint keys into it, allows the paint to adhere and gives a great foundation for the painting. So while gesso is white and it's a paint and it's acrylic, it's not the same as a normal white acrylic paint or say sort of tube colors. It's, it's a primer. It dries very matte, very flat, but it also contains calcite grounds. Now where that's important is especially for oil painters. Oil paints in a decade or so after they've been applied uh, give off a gas that if painted directly onto a canvas will actually start to destroy the canvas or linen. So a gesso acts as a barrier between the canvas and linen, canvas or linen, and the oil. With acrylic, that's not as much of a problem. However, you still want a firm, solid, stable foundation to start painting on. So do you really need to use a gesso? Well, yes you do, because you need a barrier, a good foundation between your paint and the substrate that you're painting onto. Gesso will adhere to uh, canvas, linen, wood, um, panels, uh, pretty well anything that's porous. If you're looking at painting on glass or plastic, i.e. non-porous surfaces, a coat of clear sealer or polymer gloss varnish first, leave it to dry, and then a coat of the gesso will give you the perfect surface to paint on. But it's not just about the adhesion, it's then about what happens above that. In other words, the surface that you're going to paint on. So gesso will allow you to have a silky smooth surface all the way through to something with quite a bit of texture. There are some artists that will sand in between coats to get a, an absolutely flat finish. Even on canvas with the texture of the canvas, they'll keep doing coats of the gesso and sanding between coats until it's dead flat. It's very important, for instance, for airbrush artists who might be masking off um, and, and want a, an absolutely flat finish. Conversely, you may want to have a bit of texture. So using, say, like a house painting brush to get really textured um, uh, bristle strokes is, is fine as well. Although you don't want to build up a really high relief. If you want to do that, you're better off to put your coat of gesso down or a couple of coats of gesso and then use an impasto over the top to get a really big relief. Traditionally, many years ago, although not so much now, but this is why most gessos you find are quite thick, is, is because artists actually used to, or the people preparing their surfaces, used to actually use a blade, like a big metal ruler, and scrape the gesso across the surface. You can use any of these methods. You can even add a little bit of water if the gesso is a little bit thick and just make sure you put two or three coats on to, to, to make sure you've got a good sort of barrier there. Now, if you don't want to start with a stark white surface, which can be a little bit intimidating, you can always add a bit of tube colour in with the gesso to sort of knock the colour off it. You don't want to make it sort of intensely dark blue, but you could certainly get a light blue for a sky or a background that was off-white, absolutely, by adding a little bit of tube colour uh, with the gesso before you apply it. And you know, another really neat trick with the gesso is if you work really hard at polishing it up and burnishing it, you actually will get something like a porcelain finish. It's, it's not really strong, but it'll give you that high gloss, really smooth finish. You might also want to avoid doing that when you're actually sanding if that's not what you're after. 
Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.